Global Flood Partnership doesn't have a hard deliverable defined. It's a community coming together out of interest in floods and hopefully building some activities, yes. But there's no mandatory hard deliverable. And if you sign up to this, you're probably going to sign up for some work, but a lot more meetings like this to define a clear deliverable and to deliver to Geo, to David, about this. So. So let's get started to kick off this uh, last day. Hopefully it will be as exciting as the days before. Uh, we have three talks this morning, hopefully a bit shorter uh, each talk, so you can make the coffee break. So without further ado, I um, introduce uh, Jürgen Wagemacher. He's from Floodtax, so some of you may know that company. And I'm very glad to also know that he's part of the GFP as well, and he <coughs> agreed to give a talk here. Can I say you're part of GFP? You can. Yes, exactly. So, thank I you met for him last, year, uh, last meeting in Delft. Very glad to <laughs> see he could make it here. And um, yes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Guy. Thanks a lot. Um, so, my name is uh, Jurien Wagemaker. I work for a small company named Floodtax. We analyze social media and online media for flood and drought management and disaster management. And um, in this presentation, I would like to share with you the use cases that we've been working on and the technical approach that we're, uh, we're, uh, we're using in these, uh, these use cases. But I want to start with some slides on uh, how, uh, how we got to this idea, why we think it's, uh, it's important. And now, ah, the batteries are coming. This is also working. Okay. Um, so I've, um, I'm a, a water engineer. I studied in Delft. Uh, and for the past 20 years, I've been working on various large amount of uh, flood projects uh, uh, throughout the world and uh, one project I wanted to share or one event I wanted to share is New Orleans uh, 2005 Katrina obviously um, and I was sent there um, for an insurance uh, firm I worked as a consultant at that point I was sent there for an insurance firm to really get to the bottom of what were the events the facts that led to the eventual damage and casualties in, in New Orleans we did that together with uh, Delft University of Technology and we were using all kinds of sources that we had, of course, uh, some remote sensing uh, data, some gauge stations, a lot of designs from the U.S. Army Corps were shared with us so that we can complete the, the, the picture of, uh, of the events in New Orleans. But it wasn't enough. We couldn't really capture the sequence of events. So um, then, you know, you start walking around uh, New Orleans. We were there one month after the, the hurricane. And these pictures uh, can be taken at that time, an embankment with scour on the other side. For an engineer, really nice to see what, um, how important embankments uh, really are and what happens if they overflow. Um, but it wasn't enough for, uh, to complete the picture, so we started talking and doing a lot of interviews in New Orleans and collecting images like the one on the bottom low that we got from an operator of a, an electricity firm on the other side. Someone had taken the picture at the right time, and so we knew from this picture what time there was an, uh, an overflow and uh, what happened in the inner harbor navigation channel. And it was for this uh, content, uh, for this kind of content, that we complete the whole picture of the events happening that we uh, later on delivered to the insurance firm. And this was really my, not my first encounter, but a good example of an encounter of the ground observations that we were collecting from people, only it cost us a lot of time because we went, we went there and we went chatting with the people and collecting photos like that. But I found it really interesting. Uh, later in my uh, career, I worked in, uh, in Jakarta, so I lived in Jakarta for five years, and um, really a city that has tremendous um, amount of uh, flooding um, coming to, to them. And um, 2013, there were uh, big, uh, big floods, and I was hired by uh, PT Astra. PT Astra is a big car reseller in, uh, in Indonesia, the biggest in, uh, in, in Southeast Asia, actually selling Toyotas. And the Sunter polder, this is a specific polder within the Jakarta, was flooded. Again, and they asked, why is it flooded again? And why, is our offices, uh, why are our offices wet again? So then, um, again, I've got the gauge stations and the remote sensing and et cetera, et cetera. But then you go walking around and you see these kinds of, uh, uh, these kinds of pictures. Beautiful flood walls here along the Cali Santiong. Um, but um, obviously there's a, a coupure uh, here that's not supposed to be there. And they made it because otherwise you can't uh, go uh, to the other side with a motorbike. Uh, but obviously there's a problem there. Um, and we started doing interviews, getting content again, and collecting these kinds of photos. 
where you see how the water is coming in from the Cali Sentiung, but also how the rest of the wall is <coughs> has, uh, has, has holes in it. It was again this kind of content that made us make such an overview of the floods that had happened, really by getting also the ground content, because without the ground content, you can't really, really comprehend the situation there. Last example, in the same year, I worked on a flood management information system together with uh, Deltares in uh, the, the model uh, FUSE, flood uh, early warning system. And um, it was an unluckily chosen title, flood management information system, because actually it was a flood early warning system. And early warning worked, so um, actually there was floods coming, we send out the alert, or the, the alert to the Met Office, they send out the alert. And um, to, be, uh, <laughs> to be precise, um, and uh, then we got calls, and they said, well, you built this wonderful flood information system, so where are the floods? Well, I have no idea, because we can only forecast the floods. When the floods are happening, completely lost, we don't know anymore. So it was silent on the other side of the line, because it had been an expensive flood early warning system. And, um, um, but then at the same time, we saw a huge number of uh, tweets uh, coming in. Um, uh, with, with all sorts of information uh, there about rescue activities, about the water depths, um, etc. And there, there were not just eight that as I'm representing here. We started counting them uh, later on, and here you see, uh, here you see uh, daily totals of tweets up to, uh, well, this is 300,000. So at a certain event um, in 2014, we got 300,000. Um, uh, tweets, not uh, without retweets, in uh, in a single day, um, up to uh, ten tweets per second that were coming in, and I thought, well, this is something nice. This is something nice. So um, we started looking more carefully into those uh, tweets. What is it going to say us? And well, it says quite a lot here. Here, when when you look at this tweet, it says, well, uh, it says a time. Um, which is the time of the flood happening, there's a banjir, we of about 50 to 60 centimeters, very precise, uh, did a pan uh, before Kemchik's Kamang Raya. Kemchik's is a, is a, is a shop uh, on Kamang Raya. So it was really, really very detailed. And we get these kinds of detailed messages. Um, and one day we got 15,000 individual observations that we could track with the geo reference. So huge amount of information as compared to the flood early warning system where we were using 14 gauge stations. So, okay, that's interesting. Um, obviously, uh, breaches of, uh, of, of defenses are always on, on pictures and, uh, and mentioned. Um, repair activities here. And uh, important in Jakarta is that there's a lot of NGOs working. Very small NGOs, big NGOs, a lot of them. And the co whole coordination is really complex. And um, um, at one point, but, but every self-respecting NGO is uh, making a photo of its aid and putting it on Twitter. So we got the question of one NGO. So, well, can we somehow find out where there's severe flooding, but nobody's helping yet? Well, actually, we, we can, because we can actually see all the aid being delivered. And we can also see where, 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 where nobody's at yet. So, uh, okay, all this, this information. So um, I, was, I was thinking about um, starting a company there. I thought I gotta do something with this, and um, this is this is this is um, this is this is the chance. But before I went on to do that, I had to confirm myself, of uh, of course, that my whole business model would be on Jakarta only, which is well, a nice, but nothing, perhaps not sufficient. So I started looking around, and we did a quick uh, inventory um, of uh, of all the floods in in a certain uh, particular year. We saw here in Serbia a big peaks to 30,000, South Korea 35,000, Philippines almost 50,000, Detroit 8,000, and also smaller events like uh, in inundations in the Netherlands was not all that severe up to the knee. We find it really annoying. Um, uh, 15,000 to <laughs> 15,000 tweets, thunderstorms in Essex, um, uh, 2,000 tweets, just thunderstorms, no inundations or thunderstorms happening, and. Um, uh, why, I don't know, but we also found that the 28 big floods in 2013, um, so there were 20, 28 big, big floods and 75% of the top 20 disaster prone countries are also in the top 20 Twitter countries. Don't know why, but I thought that's, that's an opportunity. So um, I quit my job and I started uh, flood tags.
what we do is we collect data, public online uh, media data, uh, from and uh, user generated content, mostly from Twitter, but also from blogs, also from news sites. And we're experimenting now with messengers like Telegram. I'll come back to that uh, later. Um, obviously, everything has to be public available information. So many people also ask us about Facebook. Um, Facebook is not, um, so, so people on Twitter want to share everything with everybody. On Facebook, you want to share it with your friends only and keep it there. So we can't use that information. However, there's also public Facebook pages and these public Facebook pages, actually we can use posts on there, we can use, and this is in some countries uh, uh, a really a great way forward uh, also with uh, citizen observations. Next, we analyze the, the content, um, which basically is um, the event detection, further uh, uh, information extraction for past and real-time monitoring. And we're doing that with uh, a number of partners. And we're all about the collaboration. We're, we're collaborating with a lot with universities like Radboud University, Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam, and with uh, Deltares. And being sure that the PhDs that are working from these universities are really um, uh, helped with our data so that they can do the research. We also deliver how uh, our software is working so that the scripts they're producing can feed back to our software. And that's how we grow uh, the, the product. And lastly, we, lead, we share the results via dashboard and via an API. We'll come back to that. Um, Here's my uh, uh, movie that doesn't work. Ah, ah damn. Okay. Try not to look at the at the table. Oh. <laughs> okay. That's a shame. Okay. This is uh, the 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 daily floods that are happening in the world uh, every day. So every day we've got well, what is it? Twenty, thirty floods happening somewhere in the world. Inund big floods, small inundations. We've, we're doing this on the basis of uh, 12 uh, languages in uh, Twitter, uh, monitoring them, got tweet anomalies, uh, statistics anomalies, and uh, setting off the, uh, the, the detection. And uh, of course, then the, the big question is how, uh, how accurate is it? So we, um, we've got here this table. Um, it, it depends on how sensitive we, we, we make it. But the number of events detected between July 2014, when we started monitoring, up to January 2018, when we did the study, is between 18 and 13 and a half thousand individual flood events. Okay, how many are correct? If we're looking at um, the, 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 the uh, let, let's look at this one just. Uh, we, we, we got an additional threshold, if we're using an additional threshold of 20 non-duplicate tweets, we have a precision of about 83% up to 87% uh, is where we're at now. We're increasing that precision uh, as we speak. Um, we have to relate that to some, there, there's no big database of flood events in the world, of course, of the large floods, but not of also the, the middle floods and the, and, and the smaller floods. Just at least to, to get some feel of it, we uh, compared it to the Munich Re uh, database, uh, not cut uh, service where, um, so we see a correct events manual validation of 56%, 54% are not captured in the NUTCAT service. Actually, the NUTCAT service only has 2% of this total number of, uh, of, of events. So, and obviously that is because our database has all the floods, also small inundations. Uh, so this is, uh, this is our starting point. The only thing is that this is a global flood monitor and a global flood monitor doesn't have customers. So how can we bring that um, to, uh, to use cases? Um, oh no, first, first this one also. The georeference is really important as well, of course. Um, um, let's look at georeference uh, quickly. Um, the precision on the first order administrative, which is like um, counties, regions, uh, provinces is 97% and lower on, the, on, on, sorry, on county level, town level is 92%. Uh, percent. This is our ongoing, ongoing work of us. There's a publication there for those who uh, like to see it. It's on our website. You can read it. This is the fifth floor of the Red Cross in, uh, in Manila. Uh, it's the operation center. Um, they have, uh, their task is to collect all the information of the entire Philippines and spread it out to the, to the other departments where the disaster response is uh, happening. And um, 
the, the slogan um, of, of, uh, of the Red Cross, I believe global, but at least from them, is uh, always there, always first. And the always first is, they really take that very seriously, obviously. So they said, can we find a way to inform us better about any new floods coming in? That was number one of the question that they had. The number two is, when floods are happening, we are scrolling Twitter and trying to you know, uh, get all the information. Can we structure that somehow? And so we did. So um, here's our flood dashboard that we've got for the, for the, for the Philippine Red Cross, where you've got all the, all the statistics. Um, all the photos and all the locations within the Philippines where you see dark blue as, as thresholds where as something severe is, uh, is, is going on. Um, each time uh, we have uh, a new event, like, like this is also an event. Uh, very small peaks are also events. We send out an alert to the Philippine Red Cross and they can check exactly what's, uh, what's happening. Um, we've been running this for two years. We've got 650,000 tweets of them. 240,000 with location. There's a large, large number of uh, small uh, events, hundreds and hundreds of uh, small events, and few really, uh, really large uh, events like here at Typhoon uh, Yagi just now um, on, on 11 August. Um, interestingly, the Red Cross is much averse of false negatives, uh, but false positives are quite okay. False positive, okay, sure. And because they're, they're gonna call to the chapters, call to the volunteers, not true, okay, or go on uh, their business. They've got six people there. It's, of course, they're busy, but they, this is their work. False negatives, they don't know anything about, and it's, and it's gone. And later on, maybe a day, maybe two days, three days, they, they hear something has been going on. Not always first. So this is, and that's where Twitter is really valuable because we can get to very low amount of uh, false negatives. Um, some tests that we did there, interesting to tell is that if here's again the um, uh, all the tweets but then positioned and um, uh, we didn't have a, a good dem or anything of the, of the Philippines but together with Iltaros we made 10 uh, flood scenarios so these uh, these uh, these are flood scenarios and um, in the interface you can click on them or uh, uh, select them or unselect them and then see what you think can be is a likely flood extent. And this is helpful because then obviously you can see that there will be no floods here, there will be no floods here, or here there can be severe floods. What is the, the severest that can be? Well, then I can go to my maximum scenario, et cetera, et cetera, and match them with the tweets that I've got. Different example. Um, this is Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. Um, they were interested in the same thing to su support their immediate flood response, so to know where to go upon a flood striking, and um, as basis for new emergency fund request via the, the DREF. So if a national society can't cope with a flood, they can ask for more funds from Geneva via a DREF, but they need to build their case in this DREF, so can, can we get that information? Of course, um, uh, this was real, a challenge for us because Twitter in, in Tanzania is really not that big. So what's going to happen? And, um, but we, we, we went out monitoring it anyway, and um, we got, in a 10-month period, 8,500 tags. Um, and beside Twitter, we also found this blog, Jummy Forum it's called, where people are sharing also information about floods. We took that in as well, making a total of 8,500. I, I found it uh, small, because I was used to Indonesia, Philippines, and uh, Renato Makara of the, the director of the Red Cross said, well, this is wonderful because it's so much more than we had uh, before. Only he had this question because he said, <coughs> uh, Tanzania is a real WhatsApp country. Everybody's WhatsApping constantly. So, well, but how do you get one, some information across then? Well, uh, I hear something in this group and then I forward it to this group and then someone forwards it to that group and, and, and everybody's connected in that way. Okay, so is that a problem? Well, that is a problem because we, it's not structured. And um, later on, I, I talked to the municipal um, disaster manager of uh, Kinodoni, and she said, I have to get up at nine o'clock in the morning to read all my app messages, to write it down so that I can report at nine o'clock to my manager what's happening in the city. So if you can do something with that, that'd be great. Okay, so now WhatsApp is uh, off limits, but uh, what we're going to do now is um, C is trial with, uh, with uh, Telegram, uh, whether we can 
uh, move the volunteers to Telegram groups where it actually is allowed to monitor in full transparency to the participants, of course, get that information and uh, treat them the same way as the tweets so that we can have an overview of what's happening in the CDO region of the country. Okay, that was two use cases back to um, a little bit to the, to the technical uh, approach. Um, so I already told uh, several of these, of these sources. Again, uh, Twitter is really valuable for real-time events and very popular in large parts of Asia, Europe, and North America. Um, uh, Facebook is uh, only for the Facebook public, uh, really relevant. There's online news and there's the messengers. Actually, I've already touched upon all these. The analysis involves um, mostly um, information extraction on the basis of natural language processing, georeferencing, really important, the event detection on the basis of anomalies, and there's various enrichments and uh, combinations that can, be, uh, that can be done. Let me go through them uh, one by one. Just to, to, to sketch this a little bit, the, the work that we do, so we've got linguists uh, in, in our company. What they do is uh, we look at uh, all these kinds of sentences, then we break the sentences up on the basis of a number of features, and then we're going to ask a user, our users, to annotate them. And say, well, um, this ty typhoon hagu pit, is that indeed a typhoon? Yes, it's a typhoon. 500,000, what is that? Oh, that's damage. Um, oh, no, that's people, et cetera, et cetera. So we, 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 train the, we train the system, and from it, we can say, no, this sentence is actually um, built up of this identifier, this location, and that uh, time, in a, in a nutshell. When we're going to georeferencing, um, uh, there's the approach we're taking there is, um, I get a lot of questions about Twitter. Are we using georeference that's inside the, the, the tweet? And I found very early on that people in Bandung were tweeting about uh, their brother in Jakarta being flooded. So then I've got the, the georeference of Bandung while well, the actual flood is happening in Jakarta. So we said, let's abandon the whole georeferencing uh, part of georeference of the, of the mobile. I don't want to know where the device is. I want to know where the flood is. So we went on to look into the body text. But in the body text, it says, for instance, oh, flooding houses, uh, hashtag Boston flood. Boston is actually in uh, USA, in the Philippines, and also in England. So I don't know where it's going to be at. And um, so <clears throat> then we uh, are looking for more of those uh, uh, tweets. So perhaps some, one says Boston, UK. Perhaps someone says some church in, in, in Boston. And so what we finally have is a lot of dots around Boston, UK, if that's the location, and some scattered dots of Boston, uh, Australia, uh, Boston, the Philippines, and some churches in, in England. And then we do a vote. And uh, <laughs> you're looking very... Uh, <laughs> 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 um, and we do a vote, and we know it is Boston, Boston, UK. In a nutshell, this is the georeferencing approach that we're taking. Um, We've got a nice paper on it, uh, it's called Tags. It's on our uh, website as well by uh, Jens de Bruyne. Um, then we wanted to do something with uh, flood inundation maps. Um, already showed that uh, we've got like 15,000 water level observations in Jakarta. We put that into Fuse, uh, Jakarta, Jakarta Fuse, and here you see um, all the Kalurahan, the Kalurahan are the Subdivisions of uh, Jakarta. Jakarta consists of about, about 105 Kalurahan. Uh, <coughs> and um, here's the Karat Barrage. The Karat Barrage is a barrage over here that uh, shows the, uh, the number of water in the channels. And we thought, can't we make this into a real time flood map? And so we did. We're taking indeed all these 15,000 observations, we're putting them on top of a dim, and we're realizing this um, flood map on the basis of hand, the height above nearest drainage uh, approach. Um, you can read about it in this article by Dirk Eilander of uh, Deltares, really interesting and really inspiring because from this you could get to real time, actually real time flood maps for those areas that have uh, a dam. So we tested it also for another area in York. Uh, York, there was a flood in 2013. And um, a lot less tweets. We only had 8,000 tweets in total. So we're also like, how many tweets are we going to need to produce this? 8,000 tweets only. And um, we had the dem and did the research, 
um, also using the hand uh, approach, coming to this output. This is York uh, again, and in green you see the flood extent maps that we got from it um, that are actually correctly uh, flooded. Um, the blue, the light blue, and the uh, uh, orange is where we're, we're off. So the similarity is, is, really, uh, is really striking. Um, in a paper by Tom Brouwer, my colleague, um, available on the website as well. But this is, uh, for, for areas with, with DEMS, this is really, uh, yeah, really interesting. Another analysis that we, <coughs> that we can do with it is really dive into the data. And we had this use case in Pakistan. So uh, Pakistan, big floods in um, 2014. And um, we were talking also there with the Red Cross, and they said, um, could we have known um, that this uh, flood was going to be there before that we, were, that we were actually informed about it? And then we did something. We said, well, this, this, um, uh, uh, the river uh, that, uh, uh, the, the, the Jalum Chenab and, and Ravi rivers, they have a lot of uh, dams and reservoirs. And we figured, let's look at all the tweets about these dams and reservoirs. And so we found that for Kashmir, we have already one uh, peak here. For Punjab, there's a peak here. For Jalum, there's a peak here. And so we could propagate the coming of a flood to finally where it happened. Uh, this is the flood happening in the upper regions of uh, Pakistan. And here, uh, somewhat later, the uh, disaster managers being informed about them. So could they have known? Uh, probably they could have known if, if the people here had informed them. They hadn't. They put it on Twitter. And looking from the statistics, you see that something is, um, is coming. Really interesting. On a different note, this is a burst of a dike. Um, it's also in, in, in Pakistan. Um, uh, it's a long story, but there were uh, a lot of tweets about this, uh, about a possible dike breach. Finally, the dike was breached. Only the people that were behind the dike were not informed. So, interesting, of course, whoever was breaching the dike knew they were going to breach the dike. And the other people could have known that something really bad was about to happen. Of, of all the signs of people that had been saying something about it, expressing their worries, uh, etc. Um, also, a paper about it by Brendan Jongman <coughs> of uh, Amsterdam. Okay, so the, to wrap up the analysis, we produce on the basis of this information, finally our output is like identifiers, is it a flood, is it a heavy rain, typhoon, the location at various ambient levels, the time, which is start and end time, number of affected, evacuated, number of people uh, deceased, and damage uh, to houses, embankments, crops, and all kinds of other yeah, circumstantial information that you could get from, uh, from the media. We can place that on a map, and if we're lucky, we can even produce flood extent maps. How do we share that data? Um, <clears throat> so, um, obviously via a front end, via a table, but most of all via our API. And there's our collaboration model is that how we see the world of disaster suppliers collaborate with each other um, and how we do it with our partners also. I suppose this is, uh, this is flood tags. We have some end users uh, straight where we deliver our uh, content. And we've got an API going to another organization who's got end users and an API going to another organization, et cetera, et cetera. I think this is a really useful and effective way of collaborating with each other. And so you see the data suppliers collaborate in diverse setups to deliver content to end users. And I think a good collaboration is where it doesn't matter which party has the contract to the end user. So I'm working a lot with Altaris, and it shouldn't matter if I've got a contract with end users because I'm hiring Altaris, or vice versa. The data flow is in the API, and if you've got a good uh, business uh, content there, then uh, you should be able to really flexibly uh, meet all your end users. Um, okay, back to the use cases. Um, um, Twitter, uh, sorry, uh, the Nature Conservancy came to us. They do um, evidence-based advocacy for mangrove restoration in Samarang. They wanted to compare flood management with nature development time series and said, what are flood management time series? Can you help with that? We're getting that from Twitter in a, in a similar, uh, similar way with, a fairly, uh, with a precision up to, uh, to 80%. We're delivering this data via our API 
to them because they've got their own websites and, and dashboards to look at. Um, then we're coming to uh, Tanzania again because uh, we've been working on Twitter and of course we were asked also uh, at that time, could, could we also do the same for news media? And the use case here was that um, a TMA, TMA is the Met Office in, uh, in, uh, in Dar es Salaam, um, they want to move to impact forecasting. And we had the, the Red Cross who wants to know more about the possible impact at certain levels of uh, certain forecast levels. So how can we match the hydrometeorological conditions to what's actually happening? So what we did is look up news articles. And so we collected 145,000 news articles from various sources um, uh, in, within uh, Tanzania. And we, um, with uh, using our, uh, our, uh, our approach, we were able to detect 175 flood related, uh, uh, flood events over a 10 year period with columns like the, the, the location, which province, the start time, the identifier, the damage, um, the evacuated and the amount of people killed. Um, so we have this history of floods and then uh, Deltares came and they said, well, let's look at the history of hydrometeorological conditions during that exact uh, same, uh, same time. And so they did, so they analyzed, and then we analyzed the relation between those two, those hydrometeorological time series and our data. And then we, uh, Deltares created a simple web app where you can fill in the uh, hydrometeorological forecast. And then what you get is um, the, the situation in history that looks, uh, looks uh, most similar to it of the past 10 years. And so now the Red Cross can see, oh, this looked like a lot like 2012. And then this and this and this happened. Don't know if it's going to happen again, but at least I've got some, uh, some, some grounds to, to build my response on. Um, yesterday, there was a lot of talk about parametric insurance. Um, World Bank is doing a, a feasibility study on whether parametric insurance could also be introduced for floods in uh, Myanmar, Lao PDR. And um, <clears throat> they asked us whether online media could play a role there. And Myanmar is not, I wasn't really enthusiastic straight away because this is really the country. Um, there's, there's no uh, Twitter, the internet penetration is relatively uh, low still. So, um, but it was a challenge to see how much uh, value we could get uh, from that. So we did the same and um, we found, we did it for an event, one event, uh, July, August, 2018. We found 228 articles about uh, floods. And here you can see them placed uh, on a map with all the green where we see, oh, I've got to tell. Um, we, we, we wanted to uh, um, compare that to the actual flood extent. And actual flood extent, also for Myanmar, is really difficult to get. We got some database from Desinventar, Desinventar that we started to, to use. And here we see in the green um, everything that Desinventar detected and we also detected. Um, dark blue, what we detected, but Desinventar did not uh, detect. And light blue, what we missed, although we do have a lot of observations also in the light blue. So this is our part of the analysis, how we can make these areas also green on the basis of these, uh, of these dots. In the end, where we're at now is that um, 71 of 109 events, locations that were flooded, um, were indeed captured by the, uh, the uh, online media and we're working on the geoparsing of the Myanmar names, which was really setting us back a lot because that's where the uncertainty is. Um, um, how much time do I have left? My, okay, cool, all right. Um, so we've been working on uh, floods um, for, uh, for quite some time, it's getting mature, and we were asked also to work, start working on droughts. And uh, the problem in droughts, uh, this, is, this is about uh, Mali. Uh, Mali Meteo is our counterpart, they want to do drought forecasting, or they're doing it, they want to improve it, but they don't have a sound history of droughts and drought drivers. In, uh, in Mali, so they asked, can we do something with online media together with, with remote sensing and get a, a, a larger database? So we're working with Satelligence on, uh, on uh, uh, remote sensing uh, imagery. And then the question is, of course, how are droughts perceived on the ground? Because if it's dry, it doesn't need to be a drought. And then what's happening exactly? I mean, does it mean that crops are lost? Does it mean that water wells are dry, et cetera, et cetera? So that's content that we can capture from the news media creating a full database and helping the, the, Met, uh, the, uh, the Mali Meteo uh, 
uh, increase their, their uh, improve their forecast. Um, this was my last use case um, for now. I've got one sheet about this, um, about another project that we've done. I don't know if everybody, anybody recognizes this, recognizes this, perhaps uh, Simon or Albert. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, okay. So a bit of a history of uh, of uh, Holland. We had a big flood in. In 1953, big flood means uh, 1,600 people killed, was really big. And, um, and during the flood, we had caissons. Oh, to, to, to close the, the embankments, Rijkswaterstaat went on, public work went on to sink uh, caissons to the bottom to make sure the flood didn't uh, proceed. In these caissons is a museum. If you're ever in Holland, do visit the museum. It's a museum about the history of uh, floods and how the Dutch have been working on, on the floods. And as you're approaching the very last room in caisson number four, um, you will find this you know, transparent sheets with tweets on them of the daily floods of what's happening somewhere in the world. These tweets are coming from us, and I'm really proud of it that we're in a, in a museum. And, uh, and, uh, and it's just really nice because it really shows that after going through all this museum that's about history and and and, and and, and, and how terrible it is that, that you can see oh, every day there's about 20, 30, 40 floods happening and this is really important that we do something about it. Summarizing, um, there's a lot of public online media available. It features, uh, the features of this information is that it's really timely, like Twitter is it's, it's out there immediately so you can you can use it for, alert, for detection within minutes. It's from the ground, so it's facts. It's also how it's perceived on the, on, on the ground. It's very effective in urban areas, especially urban areas, rural areas also, but the uh, spatial resolution will be a little bit lower. There's historic information available, at least for the news media, it really diverse, but on average 10 years back. And the availability of the media and the accuracy that we can get is really variable per region. And you can see that here for Jakarta and York, where we have an amazing uh, accuracy, and uh, Myanmar, where we are still uh, um, improving that, that accuracy to a better detail. And uh, finally, yeah, it can be used for real-time alerting. Um, for instance, detecting false negatives of an existing system. Real-time confirmation, taking out false positives of an existing system, if you have them. Historic analysis, like threshold setting for impact forecasting, which we do. Uh, Forecast-based financing, which we did in Uganda. Model validation, baseline studies, trends analysis, problem analysis. And um, yeah, this is what we're, what we're doing. And if you have any more about that, I would love to hear them. And perhaps we can have a chat about that in the, in the next uh, session, the breakout session. That was flood tanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. This, this is truly amazing. I mean, to me, amazing. I say that because I, I'm aware of that technology, but I had no idea we got this far <laughs> in this little time. So great. Thank you. Are there any questions? Maybe one or two quick questions. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we got to build up the use case then, we, we, we got to meet and, and we'll see what the use case is exactly and then we need to see how much we already have. So for the UK, um, we've already got something. For Philippines, Indonesia, it'll be easy. For America, um, there is a lot of data but we need to set it up and then we can. South America, there's, um, no, it depends. Okay, it, it really depends on the use case. If you want real-time information, there's like, uh, for instance, Colombia is, is, is wonderful, uh, Bolivia is, is, is not so wonderful. Um, if you want historic information, then uh, anything uh, anything goes because uh, um, the, the the news history on all those countries is is pretty good. So it, it really depends on the use case that you that you would have. But uh, then we can have a look and uh, we can prepare the the software and then you know, via an API serve out uh, the data. Yeah, right. You had a quick question. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. That never happens. <laughs> no, that happens a lot, of course, the fake news. Um, so we've got three uh, traps uh, of uh, verification. First is uh, the natural language processing. First, so for a single tweet, we're going to look, is this, a, is this a, um, a tweet that sounds logical? And um, so if, if someone purposely wants to bring in fake news, it won't help you. But if someone says, oh, uh, someone is fl flooding my timeline, ha, 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 ha. Okay, then we, we can discard that tweet. Um, so we're looking at the natural language processing for a single tweet. Then we have a probability of it being, being true. Then we're looking at other tweets, of course, because um, we, don't, we never have only one tweet about an event. There's always uh, tens, hundreds, and usually thousands or tens of thousands. So we're going to look if it's the, the, the information is confirmed by other uh, independent sources. That's a really important step. And the third that we do is we combine it with external information. So we also have, I, I, I didn't get around to, to, to tell it, but uh, we're also um, uh, correlating the, the location with the precipitation that, that we have on that location or further upstream. And um, obviously also by combining with, uh, with remote sensing, we can also uh, give a final uh, validation there. So these are the three steps. The fourth step is that someone actually is going to yeah, uh, manually look at it and as the Red Cross does in the Philippines, a call to the chapters and say, well, I've got this it's really strange news, only one tweet, only two tweets, uh, what, what's this, this, what is this about? And then you need to validate it like that. Right, quick question. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so a business model is, is mainly, uh, so there's two sides, there's the um, uh, development uh, part. So we are being paid to develop uh, software and configure the software for new use cases. And we've got hosting and maintenance side where we, uh, uh, we do the hosting and maintenance for, uh, for a fee. And um, um, the software, if you're a user, you can get the software for, uh, for free. So you can also do the hosting maintenance yourself, or you can take a contract with us to do the, to do the hosting and maintenance. Great, thank you. That clear? And if there are more questions, I think you could take that you know, yeah. coffee break the today. Okay. Cool. And Jürgen is also leading one of the breakouts. So. But don't just all go to his breakout. Just stay with the breakout you sign up for, right? Uh, so the next talk, uh, to move on quickly, is uh, Jim Mitchell, Louisiana Department of Transportation. I'm very glad.